welcome back everybody so today we're gonna look at something that you've been kind of having to look at for my last few videos and uh, might have a hint here <laughs> but we're gonna take a look at my Beretta 92 FS Brigadier Inox so let's hop in and we'll take a look So let's hop straight in here. If you're anything like me, you grew up in the 80s and the early 90s, and every single movie had a Beretta in it. Um, it's, as long as I can remember. Let's see, uh, Lethal Weapon, I think was the first series of movies that really got me turned on to Berettas. Then there's Die Hard. There's a few others. I'll post a couple of other. Bleh. My god, I can't talk today. I will post a couple more examples up on here. But those are the two main ones that really turned me on to Berettas. With Riggs always using his Beretta in the show. I, I loved it. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm not sure if they make this model. I'll have to, or if they make it anymore, I'll have to actually research that and find out. Because I don't see these in shops or anything. Even before the whole Koof thing started. But, let's go ahead and show you, it's not loaded, there's nothing in there, so we're fine. Alright, so you see, went ahead and got the Mechgar mags, I uh, got these on sale. These are actually really good, and they look great in it. I mean, they're chrome versus stainless, but still, it looks better than the black mags, I think. Now, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is I have updated this a little bit, uh, mainly with the barrel. The barrel that comes with it originally in the box is just a standard barrel. It's also inox or stainless steel, I think that's how they say it in Italian. But uh, this is the one you would normally get with it, but let me put that up there. Uh, speaking of the box, I do have it so I can give you an example of what you're going to get inside of it. Uh, like all Beretta products, you get this little blue plastic box inside of this you're gonna get two magazines which I don't have them right here they're locked up in the safe but it's the two of the black mags on the other point Beretta does make a really good book some color some a note page not a bad book at all let's see uh, apparently this was in Massachusetts at one point. You have your registration card that they give you. And there is a warranty card. On the other side, underneath, you'll get a toolkit of all the stuff you need to clean it. Which is pretty nice. Not that many uh, companies do that anymore. But let's get this back out of the way. But, as you'll see, it's just a very, very nice model. Uh, this one is made in Italy. You see the PB on there for Pietro Beretta. There we go, 92 Brigadier FS, 9mm Parabellum. Just, all in all, a great, great firearm. And the markings on it aren't too overzealous. So it still keeps the, in my opinion, the sexiness of a Beretta. Because this is a nice looking pistol. Between the angles and the curves, I love it. Uh, so of course, you know, you have the inox part, which is stainless steel instead of their black or blued models. Um, I do love the blued models. They're absolutely gorgeous. Basically a Beretta, you can't go wrong with their finishes because they're all beautiful. Uh, let's see. With the Brigadier model, 
one thing that you'll notice with these is they have a much heavier, th thicker, more robust slide on top. That helps with recoil and helps to keep a little bit more accuracy. Also with this model, um, this came out I believe before the uh, 92A1 or A3, no I'm sorry, 92A3. Uh, this is the model before the sights on the front were interchangeable. At least that's as far as my knowledge. I could be wrong. If I am, go ahead and let me know down in the comments section what's actually going on there. But this one does have a dovetailed front sight, so you can switch that out. I plan on putting some night sights in here. You'll see you have nice night sights on the back. Oh, I'm sorry, not night sights. Nice regular sights. I want that to be night sights on the back there. Very good looking firearm. Uh, so let's go through the features. Uh, you saw it was nothing going on. Actually, I can show that feature since we're here. It does have a safety that is ambidextrous. It's also a decocker. So that's one of the nice things about it. You cannot carry this cocked and locked because it decocks it if you put the safety on. You can carry it cocked, but I don't know if I'd do that because that is a hair trigger. Let me go ahead and show you if I don't launch this out of my hand. You have a little bit of sponginess before you hit a wall. Then after you hit the wall, that's the break. Very nice. So I like it quite a bit. Double action. Very, very little sponginess. You just have a steady pull. And right there. Now uh, with this, you can't really... There we go, there's the reset. You can't really cock it and check for the reset. You gotta let it remain uncocked. So again, Go ahead and drop that. You listen, it resets pretty far out. Right there. So it's almost all the way out in order to do the reset on it. So, not bad. Uh, you do notice there is, there are some ridges on the front of the trigger, uh, trigger guard housing. Uh, underneath the grip, it does come with this Nice Hogue looking grip wrap around, which gives a good feel. I like that. Underneath that, you do have ridges on the front. You have them on the back as well to help with grip. Has a nice beaver tail, which keeps you from getting that hammer bite. Uh, the magazine drop is not ambidextrous, but you can switch it to the right. Your takedown release is only on one side, but that's how Beretta works. I'll show you that in a little bit, how it works, in case you're not familiar with them. And the slide release is only on one side, so. And it's very easy for your thumb to get to it and to drop it down. Uh, you'll see the safety is on both sides, so you don't have any problems there. Mm, excuse me, and then here, you will notice something else. When you pull the trigger, you do have an indicator on the top there of when the trigger is pulled. See how that comes up? It doesn't go down until you release the trigger. So it's pretty neat. Uh, Alright, so the barrel I have on here, uh, this is a M9A3 barrel in inox. Um, it does fit on here perfectly. It's a half by 28 thread pitch. So I actually like this barrel quite a bit. I think it fits with it perfectly. Now, before I managed to get this barrel, I did pick up another threaded barrel, because I tried a few out. Take it out of the packaging here. Uh, this was a third-party made barrel for it. But this one is also half by 28. I like this barrel on there, but you'll see that the front is a bit larger. It's a much, much, much more robust um, front guard, so you have to take this thread protector, not front guard, fr thread protector off of it in order to take the barrel out when you're cleaning it. Besides, I think the stainless looks better in the end. We'll probably sell that barrel, as I don't really have a use for it at the moment. But you'll see everything in there. Uh, let's see, magazines. 
they go right in right, no problem they shoot right out so gravity takes its course the uh, magwell is a little beveled on the front so you'll see when you put the magazine in you can kind of rock it it is a little bit over large which helps so you can drop it right in the nice thing with this model is it's pretty easy to switch out um, let's see now the grips on these are always pretty easy to switch you just unscrew these place the new grips on screw them back in uh, the only way I think I would replace these is with maybe some aluminum grips or something like that to kind of keep the stainless look uh, some upgrades that I've been considering um, that I think I'm definitely gonna do uh, you can get a trigger pack or I'm sorry a trigger pack with a bunch of other accessories for $100 from their website it replaces the guide rod which I've already replaced with a stainless steel guide rod you can see it there it comes with a black one normally uh, so it replaces the trigger the guide rod the slide catch or slide release and the safeties uh, I was thinking about also picking up I think about $45 you can get a new hammer a skeletonized stainless steel hammer and that's another thing all of these will be in stainless steel so I think that'll be a good look you can replace the magazine drop stainless steel so that would leave the only thing in that's still blacked would be the slide re or the um, takedown lever and the sights but the sights are okay and the lanyard loop but I know I can get those in stainless also they're pretty inexpensive so I think I'm gonna do that this will look a lot better to me when it comes to being completely stainless I can get the button right there get that stainless as well I think it'll look really good I think it's a trigger bar if that's the right term for it uh, go ahead and correct me down in the comment section if I'm wrong but yeah I do believe this would look great completely stainless and that is one of my projects I want to do I'm thinking about recording that and actually putting it up as I go through each phase of uh, the different updates on it to kind of show that I am no by any means a gunsmith or engineering savvy but if I can do it anyone else can so it shouldn't be too hard I'll look up some videos research it <clears throat> excuse me and uh, I will get back to everyone on that but uh, I do have some training footage uh, I took a, a new shooter out to the range well newish shooter out to the range I should say and uh, brought him out to kind of turn him on to Berettas and I think you love them now but I'll put in some footage of that there now and uh, that way it gives you an idea of kind of how it handles and things like that and when we come back I'll show you the takedown and uh, a few other things we'll be right back back everybody it's always nice to see a new shooter or someone else that's kind of brand new to firearms really getting into it and he's really jumped in so I'm very proud of him but uh, so now we will go ahead and show you the takedown on this as usual make sure it's unloaded for all the safety Nazis out there all right now uh, easiest way to release this I find is to just lock it back drop that lever down now let me go ahead and show you what I did there because I realized I just do it so quick it's hard to tell this lever here comes down and there's a button in the back here that you push at the same time or rather I should say you push this button first then you drop that lever 
So I'm pushing the button on the back and I'm dropping the lever. You don't necessarily have to lock it back. Sometimes I do for control because that can slide if you're not paying attention. But that releases the whole upper slide assembly. Let me go ahead and show you again. Push the button here. Take down lever and that rolls forward. I think it's because it's a heavier slide that this doesn't shoot off as much. My other Beretta models I've had in the past, that slide will go flying if you're not careful. But your whole lower assembly now, you can put to the side. This is the upper assembly. Take off that recoil spring guide rod. Be careful when you take it off. You saw how I tried to shoot forward and push my hand. And you see that nice stainless steel guide rod. I like that. Then once you get that out of the way, you're going to wiggle this around until it drops out. There we go. So it's not really any strategy, just shake it and it comes out. Put down the slide, then you have the burl assembly with a little locking piece. Uh, if that part comes out, just slide it back in from the side. Sometimes it's a little picky, I've noticed. Um, I think I might get a new one of these because I noticed that the coating on this one is actually coming off a little bit. Yeah, so this is that one I ordered from their website. So maybe I'll order another one of these pieces by itself because it looks like it's nickel plated and I think the nickel plating is what's coming off. But here is the, you'll see you get a little, was it a grommet or um, rubber sealant piece? I cannot do words today. Words right on the tip of my tongue but I can't get it out for some reason. It comes in, it stays nice and tight. I've fired this quite a bit, and this has not come loose like some other um, thread protectors. So that's pretty good. Uh, you'll see I do need to clean out that barrel since the last time I shot it. But it's a nice polished feed ramp. Very, very good threaded barrel. And I think it was about 200 bucks on our website. Uh, here you'll take a look at the slide. You see it's uh, nice and thick, good shape to it. Um, this is one of the nice things Brett is known for is you have all this open area over the barrel, unlike like let's say a Glock. And this will actually lower the amount of jams and things like that that you can get. Now one thing I will say about the Beretta is, like a lot of firearms, if you're shooting it and you don't have your wrist locked like you limp wrist it, um, it can have a failure to eject just because the slide is so heavy, it can cause that. So just make sure you, your wrist is tight. Don't keep your, uh, excuse me, do not keep your wrist loose or else you can cause issues with that. Just learn a, a good steady shooting hand and arm and you'll be fine. But you'll see all the internals there. You've got your firing pin inside of there. You have the extractor, yeah, the extractor along with the that's also a round in-chamber indicator. You see how it's red on top? Well, whatever red is left. But that's how you can tell if there's a round in there. Put that off to the side. Let's take a look at the lower. This part is all aluminum, or that part is stainless. But the aluminum still looks good. This is actually, this actually feels lighter than the top. So that's why they did the aluminum. Let's cut down on the weight. You see, I got to get in there with a scrub brush and clean it out. I've done a pretty good job cleaning the most of it, but you'll see how the parts work. Uh, let's see. I know I can get this piece stainless as well, this right here, if I wanted to. Uh, I might wait on that just till I get everything else situated that looks good, and then work on the little, little tiny pieces afterwards. But I'm going to basically go complete completely disassemble this and learn how the internals take apart and work like that and I think that'll be good for me. See how the hammer comes back. You see how all the pieces work in there. See how that works. It's pretty cool isn't it? I probably shouldn't have done that but I don't think it damaged everything. It's all metal. But that gives you an idea how everything works. Really neat how they put all this together. I really like it. So to put it back together, just follow the opposite. 
And one last thing you'll notice about Berettas, what, regardless of what model you have, unless it's the shorter barrel model, as long as it's all full size, most of the stuff all fits right back in. So let's say I drop that back in. Get in there, you. All right. So we've got that back. Now you've noticed I put in the regular barrel to kind of show you what it looks like with that. That's it. So when you pull it all the way back, just flip that up, you're good to go. This is how it looked originally with the original barrel. See, not bad at all. You have a little bit of a gap in there. Everything fits perfectly fine. No issues at all. But I wanna put the, actually let me show that on both sides so you get kind of a idea of it. And decocked. That's what it looks like normally without the threaded barrel. And you see just how quick and easy it is to switch that out. There's really nothing to it. Just practice it a couple times if you've never had one before. And it's honestly one of the easiest. I kind of base a lot of firearms. If they take down kind of like the Beretta, then I really, really like them because this is the easiest takedown in the world, I feel. I'm sure there's easier, but to me and my experiences, this is the easiest. Slap the mag in. There you go. But I absolutely love this firearm. What do you all think? Do you enjoy these firearms as well? Um, do you hate them? <laughs> I know this, surprisingly enough, you'd think that people that were in the military would really love these. Um, from what I've heard, it's actually not the case. Some people love them, some people absolutely hate them. Um, I feel like that might be a little bit because in the military they dog these things out and they do not replace all the parts, so these things just get beaten all the heck. Um, which is probably the case. But if that's not, maybe it's just personal preference, more than likely. But yeah, just thought I'd share a little tidbit of information. I am no, no shape or means ever been in the military. I just have a few friends are that I've asked questions about these and how they liked them, because I love them so much, and I've been surprised by some of the answers. And uh, I've heard that there are issues from the ones that were in the military, like magazines, they've caused jams, things like that, all sorts of weirdness. But as far as the civilian market goes, which is that's where my experience is, is all in the civilian portion. I love them, and I think they're great, and I do not have a million rounds through this thing. I've probably put a few thousand. But yeah, um, what is, what's your opinion? Let me know that in the comments section. If you like these, do you hate them? Do you just think they're garbage? Do you think these things are heaven? <laughs> I think they're heaven. So I love them. But yeah, um, let me know what you think down there and uh, we can get a good discussion going. And any cool um, accessories or upgrades that you've noticed for these, let me know because I'm definitely wanting to deck this thing out. I think it's going to look nice and beautiful by the time I'm done. I hope so anyways. <laughs> I'll be disappointed otherwise. But that's all I have for today on it. Uh, everyone out there, be safe. Try to stay out of trouble. And we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.